G'day brewers. In this video, I'm going to show you why your brewery should start a sensory program and I'll let you know what its purpose is supposed to be in the first place. Let's get brewing. My name is Hendo and I'm from Rockstar Brewer. I help professional brewers grow their brand loyalty through quality, performance and passion. If you want to know more about that, hit me up on the website. And if you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. So today we're going to talk about uh, something that I really love doing when I'm working with a lot of my clients, and that's implementing sensory programs uh, as part of a brewery's quality program or it's just its general operation. And it's a really fun part of my job because I love beer and my clients love making beer and love making beer well. But when you're starting a brewery sensory program, uh, one needs to consider what the purpose of the sensory program is supposed to be in the first place. Is it supposed to be sitting around in a lab, smelling and tasting different beers and going, oh, I get a bit of diastole in that beer and oh, there's a bit of acetaldehyde in that beer. Or is there something more to it? Well, when you're brewing and you get to the end of the brewing process, um, there's a lot of things that a brewer measures. You're going to measure gravity and alcohol and IBUs and haze and lots of other different things with regards to the making of beer. But how do we transpose that into a sensory experience? Well, the answer to that is, uh, and I'm going to introduce the concept of true to brand to you. By introducing the concept of true to brand into all of your beers, you're actually defining and setting targets around what a beer is supposed to look like, smell like, and taste like. Because true to brand is super important from the consumer experience. Your beer is your brand. And by remaining consistent and true to brand, you're giving your consumers an amazing experience time and time again. And if you, can, if you continue to deliver, your consumers will buy your beer over and over again. So today's video is an excerpt from the Revel Brewing Show and super thanks to the Revel Brewing Company over in Belimba here in Brisbane um, for allowing me to reproduce this content. I'm going to leave a link to the Revel Brewing Company and the Revel Brewing Show down below. Please go and subscribe to their channel. Uh, they're a great bunch of people. Uh, today I'm talking with my good friends Matt and Matt from Rebel Brewing Company and my good mate Duncan uh, who is a hospitality industry veteran and uh, we're just having a bit of a bit of a chin wag about sensory evaluation. Before I start the show though I just need to let you know that for the non-Australian brewers Cordial is a sweet concentrated fruit drink that you add ice to and it makes just a nice refreshing drink. I don't know what you call it overseas, but that's what we call it here. And I love fruit cup cordial. So without any further ado, let's go over and have a chat about uh, brewery sensory programs and being true to brand. Cheers. Absolutely. Well, Hendo, this, um, this segment or these forthcoming episodes are all about taste testing yeah. um, and talking everyone sort of through the beers. But what we're going to do uh, before that is we're going to do, do some sensory tests and, and things like that to, so that people can understand actually what they're tasting in beers and whether it's, you know, not as... So that it's not as black and white. We actually know what we're tasting and, and why we're, we're yeah, sensing that. Yeah, that's right. So. Yeah, so we'll do a little bit of sensory a bit later. But, um, you know... Um, as far as a brewery goes, what's, what's sort of a key part to a brewery's quality program is actually having a sensory evaluation uh, aspect to it where you sort of analyse how the beers look and smell and taste. And so uh, the main objective around that is making sure that your beer is what we call true to brand. And so, uh, you know, Maddie makes you know, let's say pale ale or summer ale or something like that. It's a beer that he makes very frequently uh, and it would be very easy for him to deviate and turn it into something that it's eventually not. But what is, you know, um, Revel Pale Ale supposed to be in the first place? And what uh, any good brewery does is they what they write is they write a true-to-brand description of what 
uh, Revel Pale Ale looks and smells and tastes like. So that that becomes the gold standard uh, about what the beer is supposed to be. And it actually comes down to what the consumer expectation of Revel Pale Ale is supposed to be, right? Because having a product that is uh, consistent uh, means for a brewing business, uh, it means repeat sales and, and consumer loyalty. And so the analogy that I like to use is Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial, right? So I'm a massive fan of Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial. And when, when I go buy Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial, I go to the supermarket, I go to the cordial aisle, and I reach for Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial. I don't even think about buying it. It's just I'm getting cordial. It's Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial. I don't look at the other brands or anything like that. I'm not looking at the price. I just buy it, right? Because I know it and I love it because I can take it home and I put that much cordial in the bottom of the glass, a couple of cubes of ice, fill it up with water, and it looks the colour that I want it to look like. It smells the way that I want it to smell, and it tastes, you know, with the right sweetness and that sort of thing, the way that I want it to taste, right? And so Golden Circle have done an amazing job in making me, the consumer, a very loyal customer. We built this trust bond, right, where I trust Golden Circle to make their fruit cup cordial in a consistent way every single time. And so um, what can happen with beer is that, you know, there's a lot of different ingredients and processes and seasonal variations in raw materials like hops and that sort of thing. Um, but the challenge for a brewer is making sure that their product is, is consistently the same as best as you can. So if I was to sort of strain that relationship that I had with Golden Circle and Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial, imagine if I went into the supermarket, marched straight to the cordial aisle, go to reach for the Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial and the colour was a little bit paler than what I was used to and I would stop and I would hesitate and I would go, you know what, it's okay. I, I, I love Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial. It's going to be fine. And I take it off the shelf. I don't still don't look at the other... Uh, you know, brands of cordial and that sort of thing. I take it home and I put my usual amount of cordial, a couple of cubes of ice, fill it up with water and I look at it and the colour is a little bit paler than I'm used to and I drink it and it's not quite as sweet as I'm used to and that sort of thing. And so that trust bond that I have with Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial, it starts to become strained, right? Um, but you still remain loyal to the brand because the next time I go and buy cordial, I'm into the supermarket, I'm straight to the cordial aisle and I'll get, I'll go and buy it again, but imagine what would happen if I went to the cordial aisle of the supermarket and Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial was blue. What would you do if you were a big fan of Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial like I am? What would you do? Well, yeah, you might have tolerated it the the first time and it was a bit different colour. But if it's blue, you're just like, well, this isn't what I've bought previously and you probably would go and look for something else potentially. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what happens. So so once you break that, tr that, that trust bond between consumer and the brand, uh, what, you know, basically what happens is when I normally go and blindly just buy Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial, I can replace Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial with Revel Pale Ale, for instance, right? I go to the local BWS or whatever and... I go and buy a Rebel Pale Ale and I don't even think about it because it always delivers a consistent outcome. But with if they turn Golden Circle Fruit Cup Cordial blue, the first thing that you're going to do if you were in my situation or the first thing, the first thing I would do was I'd start looking at other brands, mm. right? And that's, that's how you know that that trust bond has been broken. And, um, and so you, you then start looking at, uh, at other brands and once you break that trust bond, it's actually really hard to earn it back.